Yeah, uh, over to you, Michelle. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Hi. My name is Michelle Medina. Welcome to uh, session six or day six of the AMS Group Bootcamp. Today, we will be reviewing um, math and content functions. Just a quick introduction about myself. Um, I'm a consultant at Cervelo. We are a Salesforce partner. Um, you know, I've worked on various Salesforce projects across multiple different industries, um, B2B, B2C, um, and also just a special a specialization within marketing cloud and marketing automation uh, projects. So let's get started. Great. So like I mentioned, we'll be going over math and content functions today. Uh, we'll start with uh, a quick brief description and examples of those math and content functions. And then we'll jump into actually marketing cloud and use some of those functions in a, uh, in a email use case. So let's go here. So let's start with math functions. Uh, before I start, uh, feel free to um, send any questions through the chat. Um, and if anyone knows the answer, feel free to answer, but we'll leave some time at the end uh, for any questions as well. So feel free to send them along as uh, you begin to think about them. Uh, all right, so with math functions, we'll be going through, you know, most of the core, the, the core functions being add, subtract, multiply and divide, the formatting functions, which include the format currency, format number, and some other, a uh, few other functions, which is the mod function and then the random function as well. So let's start with uh, the add function. So on our left, we'll have the function and we'll go through a description and example to your right. So with the add function, um, what it does, it returns the sum of the provided values. So if you look at the example on your right, um, given that you'll, you'll see the two variables, A, B, C and variable D, E, F. So let's say, you know, for this example, given that A, B, C is five, and DEF is three, uh, it, the system would output eight. So with the divide function, it will, would return the results of dividing the first parameter by the second parameter. So given that the ABC variable equals 10 and the DEF variable equals five, the output would be two. Similarly with the multiply function, it would return the product of multiplying those two parameters. So Again, given the ABC variable is 10 and the DEF variable is two, the output would be 20. And with subtract, it would return the difference between those two numbers. So given the ABC variable would be five and DEF variable would be two, it would output three. The mod function um, is also known as the modulo operation. Um, it returns the remainder after the division of two numbers. So for this example, let's say the ABC variable is 10 and the DEF variable is four, the output would be two. And with the random function, it would return a random integer between the values you specified, including those values specified. So for the example here, if our low variable equals two and our high variable equals 200, it would return any number greater or equal to two and less than or equal to 100. So it could return 42, could return eight, it could return 100, it could return two. Uh, so really any integer be greater or equal to the two uh, specified. And then format number would return or formats a string to a number, you know, such as a decimal, a fixed point or a percentage, for example. Uh, for this example, we're using the format to return uh, a percentage. So if we have our variable num to equal one, two, three, and we set our percent variable to format that number into a percentage, it would return 12,300%. And similarly with format currency, it formats a string into a currency value. In this example, you'll see the string value um, that's needed to be formatted, which is the number uh, one, two, three, four, point five, six, seven. Um, and then it's followed by the ISO locale code for the currency unit. So for this example, it would return 1,234.57 cents in US dollars. 
All right, so let's jump to a, our use case. So the N2O marketing team has a promotional email campaign that's offering an extra 5% off to loyal members. Um, so the N2O team wants to share a couple points with the customer. So they wanna share how many points the customer has accumulated in the past two months, uh, how many points are rolling over, their total remaining points, and what their points are in dollar amounts. Uh, for this use case, you know, in their business model and tools business business model, um, for every one point that the customer gets, um, that customer will receive 50 cents. So now we'll jump actually to uh, Marketing Cloud and we'll see how we can build out this email using some of these math functions and getting those four points that we need uh, to send to that customer. So let me jump to Marketing Cloud. And what we will start off with, um, since someone just confirmed we're seeing, we can see Marketing Cloud? Yes, it's visible. Great. Thank yes. yes. Uh, so we'll start off first as with the data extension. So Within our data extension, um, we have this loyalty points data extension. It includes customers' information, um, their subscriber key, and right here, which are right now the most important columns to focus on are the April points, May points, total use points. We'll, we'll get to these membership level and membership message further along in the session, um, but you'll see here you'll, that each customer has their April points and May points, and all of their use points that they've used within the past two months. Um, so this uh, data extension will be important for, uh, and will be used for our email send and will be also used to calculate uh, some of those uh, points that Entua wants to use within their email. So now that we've looked at this data extension, let's actually jump to the code snippet that we'll be using in our email and we'll start building out um, some of those math functions. So if I just jump here, in the interest of time, I have built half of the AMP script that we need, um, but we'll walk through everything together and then we'll also start building um, those math functions as well. So just a, a neat trick here and you see on line one, um, this essentially in line one and line 23 that I'm highlighting uh, hides the code from you know, showing if it is a long AM script and you don't really want to see that within your email, you can use uh, the open bracket exclamation point and two dashes to essentially hide your code. Um, so on line two, we've opened our AM script and I won't go too into too much detail um, for what you see here since uh, lookup roles and um, if they, the if function has been covered in previous sessions, I definitely recommend um, going through those sessions if you want to have a more detailed understanding and description um, with these functions. But I'll, I'll quickly go through uh, most of it as well. So, you know, we've defined our variables on row three and on row, uh, row five here, line five, we are setting our contact variable to equal um, the attribute value of our subscriber key. So this subscriber key is actually the, the column in our data extension that we're using to send. So if I jump quickly to that data extension here, you'll see we're, we wanna pull in the subscriber key. So it'll look up uh, the subscriber key for each uh, customer here. In line six here is where we set our lookup rows. So we're setting our rows variable uh, to look up um, the name of the data extension, which is loyalty points email send. Um, and then the name of the column, which is that subscriber key. And then the last value here is our contact variable, which is the value uh, that identifies the rows to retrieve. So um, it'll look up uh, that, that through the subscriber key, we'll look up that contact. And then on lines 10, through uh, 18 here, uh, what we're doing here is uh, essentially setting those fields that we would need um, for the lookup rows along with our math functions that we'll see shortly. So yep. as you can see here. Michelle, um, sorry to cut you. Uh, yep. We have one question from audience. Uh, is it possible to zoom the content? It is a oh, bit yes. uh, yeah, small to that. see. 
Yeah, yep, I can do that. Is that better? Looks perfect. Yeah. All right, great. Thank yeah, thank you for calling that out. Um, so where I left off here, you'll see that we're setting our our some of our variables that we've defined in line 12. So we've defined our April points, our May points, our used points. So in line 14 through 17, what we did here is setting those variables uh, to equal the field. Uh, and what we're doing here is uh, using our lookup rows to find that April points field. Similarly, similarly with our May points variable, what we're doing is looking up the field value of the May points column. And then similarly with use points, we are looking up the total use points column. And let me just jump quickly to the data extension so we can see those columns. So what um, I did here and what we did in those variables uh, in our AIM script is just setting those field values here. And you can see um, I've called out those exact columns that we're using. Let me jump back to the AMP script here. All right, so now that we have have our if statement, we'll actually start building um, those math functions. So let me just give a couple spaces here and start. So first thing we would need to do is define some of those variables that we're using. Um, so as a reminder, those, uh, those four points that we need to show in this email um, are, you know, how many points the customer has accumulated in the past two months. So let's define that variable to equal, um, so we can call it total month points. We also need to find how many points are rolling over. So we can call this variable um, our rollover points. And then we also need to find their total remaining points and we can call that our total points. And then one more is how, uh, what their points are in dollar amounts. So we can call our last variable here, total USD points. We'll want to show this in US dollars. So um, just name the variable there to help distinguish that. All right, now that we've defined our variables, we have to set these variables. And this will be on those four points that we uh, need to showcase to the customer. So let's start with our total month points. So um, what we'll do is set our total month points to equal and again, so our total month points, we wanna see how many points the customer has accumulated in the past two months. So we wanna add uh, the April and May points. So what we'll do is use our add function to add our April points and add our May points. So, uh, the reason we uh, use lookup rows and set our field values up here is so now uh, we can use these two variables, April points and May points within our math functions. And you'll see that along with a couple of other math functions, we'll be using some of these variables that we've already set within uh, those math functions. So now that we have our first point, let's also calculate how many points are rolling over. So if we, set our rollover points to equal, let me just copy and paste. Uh, so our rollover points, what we wanna see is um, our total month points. So all, to all points uh, and subtracted by our use points. So how many points the customer has already used. So we'll use the subtract function here. So subtract equal our parentheses. We wanna call out our two variables here. So we'll do our total month points, which we just set on the line above. And we also, we wanna subtract it by our use points, which is set within our if function, our if statement here in line 16. So then I'll set parentheses. All right, so now we have our 
total accumulated points and we have our rollover points. Uh, we wanna calculate their remaining points. So we will use our, we'll set the variable, our total points variable here that we've defined to equal, um, this will be another subtraction. So we'll, what we wanna subtract is our total points uh, minus uh, the rollover points. So we, we wanna see how many remaining points we have. So we'll use the subtract function uh, to first we'll subtract our total month points. Uh, by our rollover points, which we've set in line 23. And lastly, we want to uh, calculate how many of these uh, remaining points are, are in US dollars. So if we set our last variable here, total USD points, and we're actually going to use, let's place that, uh, two math functions here. So we will first use a divide function to essentially, you know, divide our, our total points variable. So, you know, how many remaining points they have and divide it by two. Again, as a reminder for their business model, for every one point the customer has, uh, they'll get 50 cents. But now once we have that division and that value, we'll wanna format that value into US dollar currency. So what we'll first start with is our format currency function. And what we'll do as our first parameter here is actually include the divide function and then one more parentheses to uh, uh, gather the two uh, variables that we're using. So we'll do total points. And then our second parameter is we wanna divide it by two. So I will add two here and then we'll close parentheses as this function here that I'm highlighting is just doing the division piece. But now we're opening it back up to use our format currency function. So what I'll do is uh, have a comma here uh, since this divide function is our first parameter for the format currency. Um, and for format currency, we need the ISO locale code. So um, for US dollars, it's EN US. So this uh, line 25 is what it's doing is once it divides, you know, our total points divided by two, it'll format this value into US dollars. Great. So now that we have um, used some of these math functions, we can close our AM script, which you'll see here in line 28. And again, this is just a cool trick to uh, hide your AM script on the, in your emails or in email preview. Um, it'll hide, you know, it'll, won't be, it will be hidden once you send the email, but if you didn't want to see it with your previews, you can use that cool, cool little snippet there. All right, so now we have our closed AM script. So let's save this. And now we can jump to the email where we'll want to uh, display these values. So let me jump to the email here. We have an email almost fully built out for this use case, but we'll uh, talk about where we want to um, display those values. So we have this promotional email going out and um, within the text piece, we wanna again, show those, two, those four points um, that we want to display. So to be able to display these points and uh, first thing we'll have to do is actually drag in that code snippet that we just built. So if we go here, um, you can either copy and paste that code snippet, but since it was a saved block, um, you can just insert that there. As you see um, within your email preview, you won't be able to see the AMP script. Let's say if I were to take this out, show you what that looks like. You'll see all the AMP script sh shown 
And then if I just put that back in, it'll just be hidden. Um, it's not required, it's just a like, neat trick if you really didn't want to see it through your emails. So click done. So now that we have our code snippet, we can go back into this body, the body text to display those variables. And to display those variables, variables we'll be using the V function. Um, we have gone through this V function in previous sessions, so definitely recommend going through those if you haven't already. But so let's say for our rollover points, we actually we want to display. Let's not do it in bold. So we want to display our rolled over variables. So we'll get that here, and then we'll include our rollover variable, which I believe is points, close parentheses, string. And then we'll do the same for uh, total month points. B. And then we'll add our variable here, which is total points. This is string. And we'll do the same for total remaining points, which is our total points variable. So we'll add that here. And then we also want our total points in US dollars. And we'll include that variable as well. So it'll be percent percentage variable equals our, and then we'll call our total USD points. Close it. All right. So now we have our variables displayed. So what we'll do to test this and see that uh, these variables are calculating properly. Let's so we'll go to our preview and test page. Um, and what should happen is uh, for each subscriber that we choose, the points here should calculate appropriately um, based off the AMP script that we just built. Right, so let me click done editing. I will save this. All right, let's go next. We'll have to, let's make sure we're using the right data extension. Loyalty points email send, we'll select the first one. Let's go. So as you can see, um, you'll see our rollover points, um, which was our, our uh, total month points uh, minus our total use points, which is 34. You can see our total month points, which is 49, which is our um, addition of April points plus our May points, 22 plus 27. And you can also see our total points in US dollars. Uh, so that's based off of the remaining points here. Um, and you can see 15 divided by two is 7.5. And then we have converted that into US dollars. So let's go into the next one. Sure, a couple more are being uh, properly calculated. So similarly here, our total month points equals 35. And you can see our April and May points equals our 25 plus 10. And similarly with our total remaining points and in US dollars, um, it's $8. So now that we've used some of these math functions, I would like to jump back to our slide to go over uh, some of those content functions that we'll be using. Let me go back to the deck here. So let's start with our content function. So there are, are lots of content functions. Um, we won't, unfortunately, in the interest of time, get through um, all of them. We will get through most of them. Um, most of the commonly used content functions are on the left-hand side. So the content block by ID, by key, or by name, content image by, and treat as content are 
pretty commonly used um, compared to uh, some of those build and other of those rest. Uh, you'll see here on the right hand side, some of those uh, function, those content functions. So let's jump into some of those examples. All right, so let's start with content block by, and you can use this with content block by ID, contact block by key, or contact block by name. And what the, those functions would do, it would return the content stored in that specified content block. So in our example here, you can see that our content block by ID would, what it's doing in this example is it's pulling in the actual ID of the content block that you'd want to render. Similarly, with the content block by key, um, what it would output is, and it's what it's pulling in here is the content block's external key, um, and it would render that content block that you specified. And then similarly here with content block by name, it's pulling in the actual name of the content block. Um, so for this example, it's you know this. Greeting block is the block you were you've chosen, and it's pulling in essentially the folder path of where it's uh, stored. Content image by ID and by key is similar uh, to this content block by, uh, but what it will return is an image tag, an HTML image tag with the source attribute containing the path to an image from content builder. So it's similar as you'll see on these examples, content image by ID is pulling in the ID of the content block. And similarly with content image by key, it's pulling in the content block key. Treat as content, um, treats the string, a string value as, as though it came from a content area. So what it essentially does, it, it, it parses any AM script our personalization strings within a string value. And what we'll do, um, we'll jump into Marketing Cloud and I'll show you a little bit more what that would look like. Um, so for, but for this example that you see on the right-hand side, you know, we have a variable called content math. And if we set that variable content math to equal this string, um, it's actually using an add function. And let's say you just displayed you want to display the variable content math without using treat as content. What it would actually do is display the full string um, that, oops, sorry, that, that you see uh, here. If once you add the treat as content function and then display it and then you and call out your variable content math, what it would actually output is the addition, the sum of one and three. So it would output four. If you were to just uh, output the variable content math without treat as content, it would display that entire string. And treat as content area um, is essentially, you know, it treats content retrieved from a data extension or an external source as though it is fixed content coming from a content area. So um, it, it creates a static content area that is stored for the duration of the set. So in this example, you're using the key value used to identify the contents specified in the second string. And the second string is the content stored for an email send in under the key specified in the first string. So you can retrieve the content here, which you'll see here using either a lookup or an HTTP get function. And in this example, we're using a lookup function. Uh, let's jump to more of these content functions here. Content area and content area by name. So content area is for classic content. You can use this content area, which would return the content contained in the specified stored content area. So it is doing performing the same function as content block by ID or by key or by name. Um, so for that reason, it's recommended to use content block by ID for any of the content builder. And similar with uh, content area by name, um, it returns the content contained in, in the specified stored content area that you specify. And you can see here, content area by name, it's pulling in um, 
the name of that content block. Again, if you're using Content Builder, it's recommended to use the content block by ID. Uh, these content areas, it's uh, for classic content. And you'll also see these build uh, functions here. So the first build um, option list function, um, it builds a list of options from which the recipient can select from. So in the example, the first value is the option selected by default. It's followed by the value of the first option on the list. And then it's the presentation name of the first option on the list and so forth and so forth. Um, the build row set from string returns a row set by splitting a string by the specified delimiter. So for this example, the first value, value here would, would be the string to split into a row set. And the second value is the delimiting string. Our build row set from XML is the function would return a row set from an XML string. Um, so the first value is actually the source XML string that needs, that needs to be parsed. And then it's followed by the XPath argument that specifies the XML node for use in building the row set. And then the third value indicates whether to return an empty row set on error. So if it's either a zero or one value, so zero would return, it would not return an empty row set. And one, as we're using here in this example, would return an empty row set. Our barcode URL function um, generates a barcode image URL using the specified arguments. Um, so the first string is the value to convert into a barcode. Second is the type of barcode to create. And the third and fourth are the width and the height of the barcode in pixels. You also see here our begin impression region and end impression region functions. And these uh, uh, denotes the beginning and the end of region to track with impression tracking. So in our example here, the begin impression region, region um, you're specifying it, uh, the system to track the header content block within your email, and then you're denoting uh, where to end that impression region. And then get portfolio item returns the text value of a portfolio item. Um, so in this example, you'll see here, it's just the external key of the portfolio item. Um, I did wanna call out, so there are the Salesforce documentation on AmScript functions uh, for math and content and all functions really are extremely helpful. They're very descriptive and they include examples on how to use them as well. Um, the AmScript guide is another resource which I find also extremely helpful. Um, they, the, these two have definitely been mentioned in prior sessions, but I wanted to call that out to, uh, those are extremely helpful resources. Um, again, they, they show great examples on how to use them and uh, sometimes showcase just a common use case for each one. Okay, so now that we've gone through a lot of these content functions, let's jump back into Marketing Cloud to start using what some of these content functions would look like. All right, so let me get out of here, go back into Marketing Cloud. We'll jump back to our email. Um, and let's actually first jump through our data extension again. So we'll be using some of those columns um, as part of this as well. So as I mentioned earlier, we have these membership level and membership message columns here. You'll see um, each member's level and also uh, the message that we display um, that could be used in an email. And then you, you can see within the message value itself, there's a personalization string. Um, to pull in the membership level of each customer. So let's go to the email and let's first uh, walk through um, a way to use that content block by function. So as we did earlier, we pulled in all of our AMP script into this code snippet. 
sometimes, you know, instead of having to pull in this AM script um, and, you know, copying and pasting or adding uh, an extensive or a very complex AM script into your email, another trick you can do is let's delete this code snippet. And let's pull in a new one. And let's open our AM script. And what this content block by, let's start with ID, is what it's doing, as I mentioned, it's going to return uh, the content that you specify. So as you see here, once I uh, typed in the, the function and have an open parentheses, you'll get this pop-up that you know chooses you to browse. And what it would direct you to is directing you to all of the your content builder. So, you know, what, what content do we want to return? And what we want to return is actually the AM script. So once I select this, as you can see here, it's pulling in that content blocks ID. And one way we can actually verify that is um, if we go to properties on our data extension. So you can see here that this is the key. Um, the ID will actually have to be within the email, but I'll show you what this external key looks like um, as well. But as you can see here, we'll have this. And we'll close our AM script. Instead of having to copy and paste that whole AM script code into an email, you can just refer to that content block. So once we click done editing, um, we still have these variables pointed. So preview and test should actually still calculate uh, these variables accordingly. So again, you'll see here, our code snippet's gone, but you'll see that all of our uh, points are still adding correctly. Um, so then let's go back and just show you quickly what this would look like. Uh, with the other functions as well. So if I were to use contact block by name or by key, just see, I get that browse pop up again. And again, I'll choose this AM script that we want to pull in. It, it can be, you know, another content that you would want to pull in or render. It's commonly used within, you know, code snippets. It can be um, any content block. And let's close that again. You'll see it pulls in that key, external key, which you can find in our uh, data extension here. So you'll see here, it's uh, uh, pulling in and calculating those values correctly. So now we can uh, show you quickly what that would look like with name. And it should pull in this AM script name. So you'll see it's pulling in all of the, the folder path of where this content block is initially stored. And then if we go quickly to preview, um, you'll see we're still calculating those points and it's referencing that AM script, that, that code snippet that we built earlier in the session. All right, so now that we've used uh, our content block by function, I will want to show uh, showcase how, an example of how you can use um, the tree as content function. So there's definitely uh, multiple ways uh, to render a, a dynamic uh, messaging or personalized messaging within an email. Um, in, in light of this, uh, the content and showcasing content functions, we'll use this tree as content. Um, so let's say we wanted to actually display, let me go back to the data extension to show you that message again. We actually wanted to display this membership message um, 
within our email. So rather than having that static sentence, we wanna render this uh, message for each customer. And as I mentioned, there's various ways you can render um, this personalization within an email, but um, in light of this session, we will uh, showcase that treat us content. So let's say we wanted to just pull it in um, instead of this static email, we actually, or message, or we wanted to pull in that message. So let's pull in that value and see what happens once we um, even use this attribute value function. And let's pull in that data extension column membership message. And let's close it out. So again, this should display uh, that, that message within our data extension. So let's click done. And let's go to the next page. So you'll see here, our first sentence right now, it is displaying that message. Thank you for your loyalty as a, uh, within our personalization, as I mentioned. So right now, it, what the data extension, it's pulling in the string value uh, with the function that we use as just pulling in the value within the data extension. But to treat this whole string as a content, you can use the treat as content function. So this is where you'll actually pull in. Let's go back to our email and let's We'll keep the attribute value, we want to display that column value. But now what we can do is actually include here our treat as content. Uh, parentheses, we're doing a parentheses because we want to grab this entire value and close that parentheses. So we want to treat this entire value as uh, content. So what the treat as content function should do is now actually parse that personalization string and return the actual membership level of that customer. So let's make sure this is correct. Treat as content. All right. Looks good. Let's go next. So now you can see here, we're not getting that personalization string. We're actually getting the membership level uh, value that we wanted to get. So if you go to the next member, you'll see uh, actually it's a gold member. So it's pulling in that uh, actual value instead of, or rather than that personalization string that we saw without using that treat as content function. Similar here, there's a basic member. You'll see it's populating correctly. As I mentioned, there's multiple ways to uh, render any personalization within an email but uh, that's one way you can use the treat as content function as well. Um, let me jump back to the slides. I think we have uh, leaving some time here for any questions. Yes, we do have questions, uh, Michelle. Maybe yeah. uh, if you want me to read out, I can, or you can check the chat window. Uh, yeah, let me check. Yeah. scroll up. All right, uh, Carol, is there a better case to use the function, for example, when to use content block by ID versus by key versus by name? Um, no, you're right, Carol, it does not matter. It's a personal preference. It'll, it'll either ID, key, or name will render the, the content that you choose. Um, so it, there's no there's no priority or any difference be between using any of those. Um, we, uh, I'm happy to, you know, set up some other time or, you know, uh, to walk through how we can use content area. I did, as I mentioned, um, the AMP script uh, guide documentation and then the Salesforce documentation is also extremely helpful and has some uh, example use cases as well on how to use content area. 
uh, Ashwin, can we update Salesforce CRM object? Um, yes, you can use AmScript to uh, update uh, Salesforce CRM objects. Uh, I'm personally not a developer. It's I believe it would be a combination of AmScript and also um, SSJS. Uh, Kyle, is there a generate QR code function? Uh, unfortunately, this is not for QR functions yet. This is more of a 2D uh, barcodes. And then isn't the external key different from the content ones? Yep, that's right, uh, Sudeshna. Um, and then let's see if there's anything that would I... Yeah, Justin, there there is a, a recording that will be sent out and posted on YouTube as well um, after the session. Yeah, Kyle, good point here. Um, content name and content ID uh, can can be changed. Um, the key will stay stat, you know, will remain the same. So that is a good call out there um, and something to keep into consideration definitely when choosing between um, content block by uh, function. Any other questions? Great, well, just a quick recap. Again, we went through some of those math functions um, and also these content functions. There's a lot of content functions out there. Again, those two resources are extremely helpful. Um, also happy to connect offline and uh, chat about any other questions you may have. Uh, in terms of our next session, it's actually next week, June 20th, or at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, we will be going through string and encrypt functions with my colleague, Tim. Um, the use cases are still TBD, um, but uh, will be a great session and looking forward to that session as well. All right, I'll pass it over to Sisha, if you have anything else on your end. I think we are good, Michelle. Thank you very much for this fantastic session. I'm sure our audience uh, loved this session and I see much enthusiasm in the chat window as well. Uh, looking forward to many more sessions, maybe as they requested, we might can have subsequent sessions uh, on the you know, Q&A based uh, requests. Well, thank you all for your time. Thank you everyone, have a great day. Thank you. Bye -bye.